السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته. الحمد لله بإذن الله سبحانه وتعالى for giving us this opportunity of being here and before beginning I'd like to make dua to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that each and every one of us sitting here present here or listening to the seerah of the Akhidim sallallahu alayhi wa sallam Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has chosen us and it shows that we have love for the Akhidim sallallahu alayhi wa sallam on that note looking at the Habib of the Akhidim sallallahu alayhi wa sallam al-mar'u ma'aman ahabba that a person will be with he who he loves we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that based on this love that we are doing for Nabi Akhidim sallallahu alayhi wa sallam that he resurrects us on the day of Qiyamah in the company of our beloved master Nabi Akhidim sallallahu alayhi wa sallam Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim Continuing from where Mulana left out We are after Nabi Akhidim sallallahu alayhi wa sallam received wadi for the first time A duration and some time passed in which Nabi Akhidim sallallahu alayhi wa sallam did not receive any wadi and Ibn Fattah Rahimahullah mentions in the Qur'an that the reason for this was so that the terror that seized the way of the Lord of the Lord during that first body, that terror could pass. And so that the way of the Lord of the Lord could once again learn for the receiving of body. If you look at the Qur'an Shari'i, in it there is a divine mention from Abdullah bin Jahid radiallahu anh speaking through the Akhidim sallallahu alayhi wa sallam about this quiet period that passed and in it the Akhidim sallallahu alayhi wa sallam says that after I received Rabi for the first time what he stopped thereafter one day I was walking through the streets of Mecca and I heard a voice from the sky so I turned my gaze towards the sky and there I saw that very angel that met me in the day of Gila. You were sitting on a throne that was suspended between the heavens and the earth. And when I saw it, I got terrified and I immediately went home. And then, after going home, Nabi Karim sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, Death biruni, death biruni. Cover me with a garment, cover me with a garment. After which Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala then revealed four ayat. Ya ayyuha al-muddathir, kum fa'andir, wa rabbaka fa'kabbir, wa thiyabaka fa'tahir. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala revealed these four ayat to Nabiya Kareem sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Ya ayyuha al-muddathir, O the one who is enveloped in a garment. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala followed this by a positive command. Kum fa'andir. Stand up and warn your people. A point to be noted here that in other ayat of the Quran, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala speaks and says that He has sent Nabi Akram sallallahu alayhi wa sallam as a bearer of glad tidings and a warner. But in this ayah, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala only instructs Nabi Akram sallallahu alayhi wa sallam to warn His people. And the Mufassirin mentioned that the benefit or the wisdom for this was this was to tell Nabi Akram sallallahu alayhi wa sallam that his message that he is going to take to the people is going to be met with resistance. And in consequence to this resistance, Nabi Akram sallallahu alayhi wa sallam will have to have perseverance and have to face it with hard work. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala reveals his ayah, Qum fa'anbir wa rabbaka fa'kabbir and magnify your Lord. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells Nabi Akram sallallahu alayhi wa sallam Magnify your Lord Meaning everything and every object Everything that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala created That people used to attack Nabi Akram sallallahu alayhi wa sallam Nabi Akram sallallahu alayhi wa sallam should not consider it as something insuperable And something that cannot be overpowered Because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the greatest So he should turn his attention towards Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and the fourth ayat that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala reveals وَثِيَابَكَ فَطَحِيَ That O Nabi of Allah, keep your clothes clean, keep yourself clean. As all the ulama before me have mentioned, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala created Nabi Akram sallallahu alayhi wa sallam with perfect character. Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam had that perfect character. But now Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala was telling him that O Nabi of Allah, that perfect character that we have given you, that character up to now has not been tainted. But from now we have to make extra effort to keep the character that way in order to properly convey the message 
that I am giving you of Islam. So after these ayat were revealed, Nabi Kareem sallallahu alayhi wa sallam now started preaching Islam secretly. And by secretly, we mean Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam started inviting a select group of individuals. And naturally, Nabi Kareem sallallahu alayhi wa sallam started with his family, his household, and his close friends. So the first woman to accept Islam, or rather, the first person to bring Iman on the Nubu of Nabi Akarim sallallahu alayhi wa sallam was none other than Khadija al-Kubra radiallahu anha, the honorable wife of Nabi Akarim sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. She was the first person to believe in the Nubu of Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Amongst her virtues, she was also the first person to hear Quran being recited from the Mubarak mouth of Nabi Akarim sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. She was the first person to learn Quran from Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. She was the first person to learn how to make wudu and perform salah from Nabi Kareem sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And after Khadija al-Kubra radiallahu anha, then was Ali radiallahu anha. Early in Nabi Kareem sallallahu alayhi wa sallam's life, Abu Talib, the uncle of Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, was experiencing some financial difficulties. And to lessen the burden of his uncle, Nabi Kareem sallallahu alayhi wa sallam offered to take one of his children into his custody and be a guardian to that child. So Nabi Kareem sallallahu alayhi wa took Ali radiallahu anhu. So Ali radiallahu anhu was staying with Nabi Kareem sallallahu alayhi wa sallam prior to Nubuwa. He witnessed Khadija radiallahu anhu and Nabi Kareem sallallahu alayhi wa sallam praying salam. And he asked Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, what is this? So Nabi Kareem sallallahu alayhi wa sallam invited Ali radiallahu anhu to Islam. At that time, he was a mere boy of 10 years. So he told Nabi Karim sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, this is something new to me. I will go and speak to my father about it, and then I will let you know whether I accept or I don't accept. Nabi Karim sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, wanting to keep this Islam to a select group of people, instructed Ali radiallahu anhu, Oh Ali, if you want to accept, by all means accept. And if you don't want to accept, keep this to yourself. It was the system of Allah that not even one night passed when Ali radiallahu anhu presented himself in front of Nabi Akareem sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and said, I want to accept Islam. Like this, Ali radiallahu anhu accepted Islam. Today after Zaydi Harim radiallahu anhu, Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam's adopted son and three slaves and all Nabi Akareem sallallahu alayhi wa sallam's daughters accepted this message of Islam. From here there are many lessons that one can learn. It shows us that Nabi Akareem sallallahu alayhi wa sallam's house, Khadija radiallahu anhu's house was the poorest house on this planet to believe and to have the ummahs of Nabi Akareem sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. It was the first house in which Quran was recited, the first house in which Salah was recited, the first house in which Wudu was made. And from there we also see that when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala made obligatory something, the first thing Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala made compulsory and faral was bringing Iman in one Allah, Tawheed. The very next command that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala made for us was death of Salah. This shows us the importance of Salah. So Khadija radiallahu anhu and Nabi Kareem sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and all his children accepted Islam. This also shows the nature of how children should be brought up. The upbringing that Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and Khadija radiallahu anhu gave their children that when Islam was presented in front of them they were obedient and they all accepted the command of their parents. Each one of them accepted Islam. After this, Nabi Kareem sallallahu alayhi wa sallam then took Islam to his close and prison friend, Abu Bakr Siddiq radiallahu anhu. Nabi Kareem sallallahu alayhi wa sallam presented in front, Islam in front of Abu Bakr radiallahu anhu. Abu Bakr radiallahu anhu raced to accept Islam. After which Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said that everybody that had presented Islam in front of, he staggered, he hesitated and he reluctantly accepted Islam. But when I presented Islam in front of Abu Bakr radiallahu anhu, without the blink of an eye, he accepted my message. And that, this is what gave Abu Bakr radiallahu anhu the title of a city. Abu Bakr radiallahu anhu was the first free male to accept Islam. Not only was he a free person, but he was also a nobleman and a well respected person among the Quraysh. And the reason why the people and the Quraysh respected Abu Bakr radiallahu anhu. Firstly, was because of his good manners and his agreeable nature. Everybody who came into contact with him could sit with him, could talk with him, could mingle with him. That was Abu Bakr radiallahu anhu's nature. Then, 
The second reason why all the Quraysh loved Abu Bakr radiallahu and respected and revered him was because Abu Bakr radiallahu and his lineage was one of the most noblest lineages that were found among the Arabs. And Abu Bakr radiallahu and had the most knowledge regarding lineage amongst those people who were present. And we know in that time everybody took pride with their lineage. Each one of them not only memorized their own lineage, but they would even memorize and keep track of their lineage and the ancestry of their camels and their animals. And Abu Bakr had the most knowledge regarding lineage. The third reason why people loved Abu Bakr and respected him was because Abu Bakr was well known for being a fair and businessman. In his dealings, he was fair and just. That is why people used to love Abu Bakr. The, one of the other reasons why people used to love Abu Bakr was because Abu Bakr was a person who had a tremendous amount of knowledge. So all the experienced people and all the high-ranking people of the Quraysh would come to sit by Abu Bakr to gain from his knowledge and his expertise and just to sit in good company. After Abu Bakr accepted Islam, Abu Bakr then took the message of Islam immediately to the other people. We see from here that every, every echelon of society revered Abu Bakr Be it those who were poor, those who were rich, those who were wise, those who needed knowledge. All people flocked around Abu Bakr And then Abu Bakr called all the people he knew towards Islam. And amongst the luminaries that accepted Islam on the hands of Abu Bakr many of them are known as the Ashara Mubashara. Uthman bin Affan radiallahu anhu, Saad bin Abi Waqas radiallahu anhu, Zubair bin Awam radiallahu anhu, Abdul Rahman bin Auf radiallahu anhu, Talha bin Waydullah radiallahu anhu, Abu Uraida bin Jarrah radiallahu anhu, Saad bin Zayd radiallahu anhu. All these dignitaries from the Quraysh accepted Islam on the hands of Abu Bakr radiallahu From here, one other lesson and point we can learn is that a person who has a high ranking and standing in society, he has a greater chance and opportunity of making a positive impact on people compared to a person who does not have a high ranking and status in society. Amongst all the people that accepted Islam on Abu Bakr radiallahu anhu, we will look at the Islam of Uthman radiallahu anhu. We do not have time to run into all these uh, stories of these Sahaba, how they accepted Islam, but each one of them has a unique incident. We will look at Uthman radiallahu anhu, bringing of Islam. Uthman radiallahu anhu, and we narrate this incident from his own words. He says, one day I walked into my house and my aunt, my mother's sister, Saula, was sitting there. And my mother's sister used to always engage, always engage in soothsaying and fortune telling and poetry. So when I walked in, she saw me and as she set eyes and laid eyes on me, she recited some couplets. And the couplets she recited was, and she carries on. The meaning of the couplet that she recited was congratulations and fair tidings to your old man. Thrice and thrice again and thrice more. And then once more to complete ten. So she congratulated with man Allah on ten times. And then she says, You are fortunate to acquire good and you are privileged to be protected from evil. By Allah, you will wed a virgin girl. And she mentions a few other things. So Uthman radiallahu anhu looks at his auntie in surprise and he says, Oh aunt, what are you saying? Thereafter she, re she recites a few more couplets and she says, Uthman, ya Uthman, ya Uthman, Lata al-jamal wa lata al-shan, hiya nabiyun ma'ahu al-burhan. Oh Uthman, there is a Nabi who has come with a message from Allah. And Uthman radiallahu anhu looks at his aunt and he says, What are you talking about? Who are these people you are mentioning? Who are you speaking about? And then she says, that, oh Uthman, I am speaking about Muhammad ibn Abdullah, Rasulullah ibn Abdullah, Jaa bi Tanzilin min Allah. I am speaking about Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam. He has come with a message from Allah. He is the messenger of Allah. Uthman radiallahu says after she said this, she got up and she left the house. So Uthman radiallahu anhu then spent the rest of the day, and at night when he put his head down on the pillow, he was restless. This, this words of his auntie, these, these couplets of poetry, left an impression in his mind. So he tossed and he turned and he tossed and he turned. And then he decided, you know what, I am good friends with Abu Bakr. So I will go to Abu Bakr and speak to him. So 
So the next morning, he goes to Abu Bakr radiallahu anhu and he speaks to Abu Bakr radiallahu anhu narrating to him the sole incident of what transpired between him and his aunt. And Abu Bakr radiallahu anhu tells him, Oh man, mashallah, you are a person of intelligence and you are decisive. You can decide between what's right and what's wrong. Nobody could do me. And then he gives him a certain message of Islam. Thereafter, he tells him, Oh man, if you still want to decide, come, Sit in one of the gatherings of Nabi Akram sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and listen to what Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam has to say. After that, you can decide whether this is something you want to accept or you don't want to accept. And Uthman radiallahu alayhi wa says, it was just my luck. As soon as Abu Bakr radiallahu alayhi wa said that, Nabi Akram sallallahu alayhi wa sallam walked past with a clock in his hand. So Abu Bakr radiallahu alayhi immediately stood up, stood up, he whispered something into Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam's ears, to which Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam sat down and started speaking to Uthman radiallahu alayhi Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam told him, I am a messenger of Allah, I only instruct good, I command good, I forbid evil, and gave him a message of Islam. Then his man radiallahu alayhi wa says, Fawadullahi, ma tana alaytu dina sami'atu kawluhu an aslam. With man radiallahu alayhi wa sallam, he takes a qasam. While Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam was speaking, not a moment passed that I could bear stay without Islam, and I immediately accepted Islam in front of Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. This was the Islam of our man radiallahu alayhi wa sallam. We mentioned in brief the Islam of Ja'far radiallahu anhu. Ali radiallahu anhu, we mentioned he, he accepted Islam in the early days after Khadija radiallahu anhu. So after he accepted Islam, Nabi Akareem sallallahu alayhi wa sallam used to go with him into the mountains. And Nabi Akareem sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and Ali radiallahu anhu used to pray salat in seclusion so nobody could see him. Abu Talib happened to pass by there one day. And as he passed by, this was a time that Ali radiallahu anhu never yet revealed his Islam to his father. So, he sees the two of them performing the salah. He stops. After they complete the salah, he asks them, What is this that you are doing? And then Nabi Akarim sallallahu explains to him, I am a messenger of Allah and I call towards good and I do this. So he turns towards Ali and he asks him, Oh my son, do you follow this man? So Ali radiallahu says, Yes, I follow the religion of Muhammad. He only encourages good. Then Ali Abu Talib tells Ali radiallahu anhu, He's fine, stick with your cousin. And he goes away. Sometime later, the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam and Ali radiallahu anhu are also performing salah in the same spot. Abu Talib happens to pass by with Jafar radiallahu anhu, the brother of Ali radiallahu anhu, and then he stops. He looks at Jafar and he tells him, "Oh my son, you should join your cousin." Meaning, you should join the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam. Abu Talib is telling his son Jafar, "You should join the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam. He is commanding good. He is a man of virtue. Follow him." You will be successful. And this is how Jafar radiallahu joins his brother Ali radiallahu anhu in Nabi Akram sallallahu alayhi wa and he accepts Islam. From here we see, and we will see time and time again in history, there are so many people that knew and accepted that Nabi Akram sallallahu alayhi wa was the messenger of Allah. All he did was preach good, but they were not given the tawbeet and the hidayah to accept this message of Islam. They encouraged others to accept Islam, but they themselves did not accept the message of Islam. One great example of that is the example of Abu Talib. As we carry on, and Nabi Akram sallallahu alayhi wa sallam then invites other people towards Islam, and the whole first wave and second wave of Sahaba or people, Quraysh, become Muslims. And it is mentioned that approximately about 40 of the people of Quraysh become Muslims. These were regarded as the first overnight Sahaba. When Abu Yaqarim sallallahu alayhi wa sallam presented this message of Islam, it was faced with opposition. There was a certain group of people that were dead bent on defying Nabi Yaqarim sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and making his life typical. And these were the people who were high ranking people in society and they were the neighbors of Nabi Yaqarim sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And they, their day and night, they were obsessed with one single mission of antagonism, only to make the life of the Sahaba difficult. We are we have all the stories of how these people tortured the Sahaba. How Bilal radiallahu anhu was tortured, how many other Sahaba were tortured because this was their mission. And why was this? This was because because Allah subhanahu wa taala's system that whenever Allah subhanahu wa taala created something, Allah subhanahu wa taala created its opposite. Every single time, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in the Qur'an, وَمِنْ كُلِّ شَيْءٍ خَلَقْنَا زَوْجَيْنِ Out of everything that we created, we created it in pairs. We created opposites. 
So like this, for every Musa, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala created a Fir'aun. For every Fir'aun, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala created a Musa. Bringing us on this topic of Fir'aun, the Fir'aun of this Ummah is regarded as Abu Jahl. Abu Jahl, whose name was Abu Hakam, the father of wisdom. He, Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, gave him the title of Abu Jahl, the father of ignorance. He also, we are well aware of all the atrocities he made the Muslim space. And many a times he used to walk around and he used to proclaim that Allah Aziz al Hakim, I am the one who is very wise and revered and noble. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala revealed the ayat of the Quran saying that the Guru in Naka and al Aziz al Kareem. Allah mentioned through ayat of Jahannam, Inna shajarat al Zakum, verily the tree of Zakum, it will be the food of those people in Jahannam. It will boil in their bellies like how oil boils in their pot. And then Nabi sallallahu alayhi Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala revealed that taste this. Verily, you are the one who said on earth that you are noble and you are revealed. There are many other enemies of Islam. Abu Lahab was one of them. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala revealed the surah regarding Abu Lahab also. It is very unique and very strange how all these people met their doom. They gave the Sahaba difficulty. Abu Lahab, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala revealed in his surah and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said that he will be destroyed. He will do later, inshallah, when Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam started preaching Islam openly. Then Abu Lahab was the first person to stand up and say to Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, يَبَّنْ لَكَ سَائِرَ الْيَوْمِ أَلِيَهَادَ جَمَعْتَنَا That may you be destroyed. Did you gather us for this? Just to preach to us the message of Islam? And then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala revealed this ayah to say that this Allah will not be destroyed. You or Abu Lahab will be destroyed. And it so happened that soon after the battle of Badr, Abu Lahab got a sickness. Such a sickness that people thought was contagious. So they shunned him aside. They put him in one desolate house in the corner of the village. He spent his time there and soon he died. After he died, his body lay there rotting. For three days, nobody went there to touch his body. And people rebuked his children. How can you leave your father like that? Then they hired a few Abyssinian slaves who dug a hole, took sticks and pushed Abu Lahab's body into the hole and threw stones away to cover it. In that same surah, Abu Lahab wasn't the only enemy of Allah. In that same surah, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentions of the wife of Abu Lahab, Umm Jameen. She used to get thorns, go to the, to the forest, cut wood, put, it on, put the bundle of wood on her head, Tie it up with rope, tie it on her head, walk with all the thorns from there, she, she should lay in the path of Nabi Karim sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And it so happened that Nabi Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said in that surah, Hamalat al hatab fi jidiha hablum min masad. In her neck will be a rope of twined fiber. Some Mufassirin say this will be her punishment in Jahannam. While other Mufassirin say yes, it will be her punishment in Jahannam. But in this world it so happened that one day she was carrying that very bundle of wood and she was tired and she sat down to rest. And that bundle of wood fell behind her, causing that rope to tangle around her neck and it suffocated her and killed her. There are many enemies like this of Nabi Akram sallallahu alayhi wa that spend their time traveling and giving difficulty to the Muslims. And each one of them met the fate that was met out to them. When we see Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam how many times made dua and he asked Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to remove all these enemies and incidents are mentioned in history, we will come across them in the books. Where Jibreel al Islam came and he pointed finger to this one and that one and that one, as Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam complained. And each one of them met their fate and they passed away. From here we see that in the early days of Islam, Islam did not spread through violence. But rather, violence was an instrument that was there to subdue Islam. People who say Islam spread by the sword are totally wrong. We see here from the aflaf of Abu Bakr, from the aflaf of Nabi Akram Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, Islam spread, which brings us to the end. We saw all these incidents where the people who accepted Islam and those who refused Islam. That Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam gave the same da'wah to all of them. Some of them accepted and some of them didn't. It shows that Hidayah and Tawfiq is in the hands of Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala Himself. Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam did not stop inviting them. He continued to invite them. But the end result was not in his hands. The end result was in Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala's hands. So similarly in our lives, it is our duty. We see our children doing something, we see our spouses doing something, we see anybody doing something that is wrong. It is our duty to keep on calling them and calling them. The result of that, the culmination of that is in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's hands. Whether Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala decides to give them tawfiq, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala does not decide to guide them and give them hidayah. That is in Allah's hands, but the duty to go towards Islam is in our hands. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala give us the tawfiq, make us like these pioneers of Islam. Subhanahu wa ta'ala. Thank you.